there are farmers who get goosebumps when they hear the word tomato farming being mentioned. But there are also some farmers who have made some good profit and created wealth doing tomato farming. And new farmers ask themselves, what do they do that others that make huge losses don't do? Where do they get it wrong? Is it from the variety selecting? Is it the market? Or what is it? Well, in this tutorial, we shall tell you everything that you need to know on successful tomato farming and especially how you can grow good tomatoes and the best timing for high prices. In this tutorial, we shall cover the following topics. The Kenyan tomato industry, the best time to plant tomatoes in Kenya, the best place to grow tomatoes in Kenya, the most profitable high yielding tomato varieties to grow, how to plant good tomatoes, the worst tomato paste and how to control them, tomato diseases and how to control them, cost and profit of tomatoes farming, and finally the bonus tips. So make sure you stick till the end if you really want to start getting good profits from your tomato farming. Actually, at the end of this all, you will realize what separates those who make profit in tomato farming and those who make losses. And remember, we are dedicating this version to those serious farmers, those really focused farmers who need to start making a living and money and profit from tomato farming. The Kenyan tomato industry. Kenyan tomatoes, most of them are sold in the market, though there is a small portion absorbed by the industry and therefore it is the mass market that determines the overall prices that farmers earn. Now tomato prices in Kenya can be determined by weather, supply, demand and most of all the brokers will and greed. How much brokers want is what the farmer will sell simply because he cannot sell his own produce. And therefore, the inability of most farmers to access market is what has empowered merciless brokers who never farm but are eat the biggest pie of the tomato production. Selling tomatoes in kilograms, especially as how industries absorb, is the most profitable way for farmers. However, brokers prefer using exploitive units of measure such as hip crate or probox to earn abnormal profits. The best time that you can plant tomatoes in Kenya. The perfect time that you can get good prices at low cost is one that coincides with low market supply. Yes, planting your tomatoes in such a way that you'll harvest them when they are least little market supply. At least at this time, prices are high and even if brokers try to exploit you, will still get good margins. And at this time, especially when there is heavy rain, most produce is destroyed by the rain, the roads are inaccessible, therefore the supply is low and prices are high. Remember, Tomato demand is always there. People will still continue consuming tomatoes regardless of the weather. Where can you grow tomatoes? The best place to grow tomatoes is one that has fertile, well-drained soil and warm weather. Warm weather hastens and fastens the tomato growth at low cost especially when it comes to controlling fungal diseases caused by cold weather. Doing outdoor tomatoes in wet cold regions increases the cost of production especially in controlling diseases compared to doing it in weather in warm weather regions. The greenhouse system is ideal in both hot and cold regions as it enables faster growth 
of crops. The most profitable high yielding tomato varieties to grow in Kenya. In order to make money in tomato farming, you must select the best tomato variety with faster maturity, high yield and good tolerance to diseases. All tomato varieties are not the same. They vary in terms of yield and resistance to diseases. The best two varieties that you can plant and get good high yields is Terminator F1 from Royal Seeds and also F1 from Seminist. These are the best and most profitable outdoor tomatoes to grow in Kenya. For greenhouse farmers, Susanna F1 has good shape, good size, and therefore makes it the best tomato variety to plant inside greenhouse. It is a product of royal seeds. Now, let's check what makes the Minita F1 a good variety. One, it is a very vigorous plant, long, determinate, and a heavy yielder. Its fruit has deep color with oval shape. It matures with 75 days from transplanting, has a fruit weight of 125 to 150 grams, a yield potential of 40 tons per acre. Okay? And those harvested fruits, they can stay up to 21 days fresh at room temperature. This is what makes it most ideal for buyers. They want a produce that can stay long after harvest. Terminator F1 has a 21-day shelf life. An acre can hold a plant population of around 8,000 plants of Terminator. Another cool variety that you can do is answer F1 from Seminis. It is elongated, square, loud tomato hybrid. It's best for open field environmental condition. It brings value to growers with overall fruit quality, disease package, extended shelf life, and plant yield. After getting the best variety, how do you plant it? Here is how you can plant good tomato. In outdoor farming, dig planting holes on a spacing of 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters or 60 centimeters by 50 centimeters. But for greenhouse farming, you can do 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters simply because you will do the pruning. After that, apply well decomposed manure. 2 kg precisely per planting hole. Cover with loose soil and water. Then drench with thunder insecticide to kill any cutworms. And city shooter or optimizer for removing any transplanting stress on the crop. After that, you can transplant your seedlings. In large scale farming, sourcing seedlings is economical. However, for small scale farmers, Laying your own seedlings is most economic and the variety is guaranteed. Even for large-scale farmers, if you can manage to raise your own seedlings, it's very, very economical. And also, the variety is guaranteed. We've experienced several cases where farmers, they ordered or outsourced seedlings, but they were not the variety that they were promised, giving farmers losses. And remember, you can only realize this few months down the line and it's irreversible there's nothing much you can do raising own seedlings is guaranteed of quality and variety after you've planted your tomatoes the next thing is feeding feeding is what determines the yield regardless of the variety if you have a good variety and you don't feed it well you will definitely experience low yields here is the tomato fertilizer application schedule. The fertilizer that you need to apply, how, and even the quantity. Top dress with DAP, NPK, 1717, and CAN fertilizers on the 14th day after transplanting, 45th day after transplanting, and 16th days after transplanting, respectively. What do I mean? I mean, during planting, you don't apply the DAP. Two weeks after your seedlings have developed, you can now come and apply the DAP. At this time, the seedlings will have developed the root hairs and managed to absorb the fertilizer. If you apply it during the planting, it may be easily leached away and not end up helping the crop. 
after that, 45 day equivalent to one and a half month after transplanting, you can now apply NPK 17, 17, 17. It has the banners nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These will initiate fruiting and flowering. So you don't skip this one and go to CN. No, this one will initiate fruiting and flowering and give you high number of fruits and flowers. After that, then two months after transplanting, you can apply now the CN fertilizer. CN has the calcium that will help in the expansion of the fruit and that's why we usually recommend it to be done 60 days after transplanting you can supplement this fertilization by applying nitrogen foliar fertilizers such as you can apply is the grow vegetative on the first month that is two weeks after transplanting and your top testing every week you do is a grow vegetative to enhance foliar growth on the second month after transplanting now you apply the npk Foria such as Wuxo uh, and also Advanced K. This one has more potassium and it will help in fruiting and flowering. On the third month, you can now apply calcium leach foliar fertilizers to prevent blossom end rot and also these calcium boron foliar, they will prevent in fruit and flower abortion. After that, we gonna look at the worst tomato paste and how to control them. Imagine after selecting the best variety, feeding, then now what kicks out the of tomato farming, its paste and diseases. We are not going to allow this. And that's why we are now giving you the worst of all and the best chemicals you can use and how you can manage to apply them. The number one paste that has run most farmers out of business is Duta Absoluta or what we call leaf miner. It's the most destructive pest in tomato farming due to its infectiveness to most chemicals caused by insect nature of damage. Actually, it tends to hibernate between the layers of the leaves so that when you apply the chemicals, they are much not effective. To identify them very easily, you can see some marks as if a uh, kind of snail passing by. We often call them broad shaped mines on the leaves. Rarely you find them on stems, but you can also find them there. The best control for tuta absoluta is applying the best chemicals early. So you can apply belt for a male at the rate of 4 ml in 20 liters of water or MR on 10 ml per 20 liters of water. These applications should be done from the third week after transplanting and you continue at least weekly, weekly, weekly. And when you apply, you apply on the leaves, below the leaves, and also on the soil. Okay? Why do we apply on the soil? So that we can manage to kill all the eggs laid on the soil. Below the leaves, you need to control it and also on top, control it. When you do this, you will manage to have a total control before it reaches the last stage where it's like a fly. Remember, it goes the whole metamorphosis. So if you don't control it that before becoming a, an insect, it will be hard. And this is what has caused most farmers low yields. You find fruits, they have made some holes and buyers don't also want to buy them. No one wants to buy a tomato with walls made of insects. So the best way to ensure that you, you can use bait for a male per 20 liters of water or emerald 10 ml per 20 liters of water and apply early. There is no shortcut about it. The next insight that has caused total destruction in crops and especially in greenhouse farmers, it's white fries. This one has drained most farmers. White fries, they are white stab sucking insects and by doing so, they tend to promote growth of sooty mold, kinda extricted honeydew. They cause irregular ripening of tomatoes and can also transmit viral pathogens like the tomato yellow leaf curl virus. To identify them, you just need to shake shake the plants 
a little bit and you'll see white flying insects along. To control them, apply profile at 30 ml per 20 liters of water or also emalone 10 ml per 20 liters of water. The application if it's on greenhouses should be done on the midday. If it's on the farm, it should be done on the evening. You apply around the farm and then you apply inside. Not inside, then you will finish with around, no. Spraying fast around the farm contains the, them and makes them easy to be killed. After controlling the pests, the next thing you need to watch out is the tomato diseases. Here is how you can control them early. The most destructive tomato disease is bright, often known as baridi. Ama kuchomeka. This one has drained a lot of farmers and kicked them out, out of tomato farming business. Tomato arid blight is a disease characterized by brown spot with dark concentric trees. The disease spreads rapidly, affecting the leaves and the stem. And finally, it affects the fruits. To control it, apply mystery 72 WP at the rate of 30 grams per 20 liters of water or Lidomil Gold at the rate of 50 grams per 20 liters of water. The best way to control them is area application. Once they are affected, it becomes very, very hard. Remember, the cells of the plant die, so and you cannot manage to revive them. And therefore, the best way is to prevent early. When you've seen little infestation, you can first apply copper beast. Fungicides such as the green cop or lisa cop. And then after that, you now continue applying the normal fungicides. But most of all, is ensuring that you've prevented the infestation. And the best application rate is applying twice per week in cold seasons or heavy rain season, or once per week in hot seasons. The next disease that has destroyed a lot of tomatoes is tomato yellow leaf spot disease. You find the leaves have black spots. Okay, The blight and spot disease are different. For spot disease, you find spots evenly distributed on the leaves. But for blight, you'll find along the margins as if they are starting to dry. It, sta it starts by affecting older leaves with greenish yellow spots begging from the top of the leaf. Progressively, the spots become dark with infected blossoms also turning black and falling off. The disease, it also affects fruits. For effective control, you can apply either Trinity Gold at the rate of 50 grams per 20 liters of water or you can also apply score. Yes, at trees at the rate of 20 ml per 20 liters of water. And these two will help in total control of this spot. These spots and blight, these are the worst diseases that will kick you out of tomato farming. Imagine all that investment and bees is where you come to fall. Or after all that investment and then you let, just because of the carelessness, you let your crops be destroyed by this pest, the tutor, and also the white flies. Actually, we don't expect any farmer listening to this tutorial to be ever again stressed by this disease. We've given you total control. And after you've done this, now let's do the math. How much are you willing or highly likely to make? And how much are you highly likely to incur? The cost and profit of tomato farming in Kenya. The cost of tomato production in Kenya is 5,000 Kenya shillings. And you can find all this math on our previous article, which you can click here above. This is often varies with season, location, and management. Under good management, an acre can produce 300 crates. If a farmer sells, if a farmer sells one crate at around 1,000 shillings, then 
a yarn 300,000 shillings from 300 crates in one acre. This gives him a profit of around 115,000. However, if he does sell the similar crates below 800, 500, and even as it was in some months past at 300 shillings per crate, the farmer definitely make losses. So therefore, the best means that you can manage to get good profit is selling your yield above 1,000 shillings per crate. At least this way, you'll get some good profit. Remember we promised as we begin to give you the bonus tips. We have the very bonus tips. How you can increase yield. Then the second one, how you can speed the tomato growth. And also the third one, how you can get your tomatoes to produce more fruits. Now, to increase yield, and especially tomato yield, ensure that you've planted with 2 kg of manure. Ensure that you've top pressed with 100 kgs of DAP, 100 kgs of NPK triple 17, and 100 kgs of CAN. And you've done sufficient irrigation. Don't forget also to control the pest and diseases. Once you do that, you will definitely increase your yield. The next one on speeding the tomato growth, ensure that you planted in warm areas. Ensure that you water very well and you feed them promptly. And by feeding, I mean giving them the fat light fertilizer at the right time. Note that you are giving the DAP two months or you are applying CAN at the beginning. Those ones will not give you the good results. The bad one, how do you get your tomatoes to produce more fruits? One, you can spray high potassium foliar fertilizers, such as the Advanced K. This one will enhance flowering and fruiting. And don't forget to combine it with boron. Boron will prevent the formed fruit and flowering from aborting. And the bad thing, don't forget to add calcium. It will prevent the blossom and rots. That's how smart farmers grow tomatoes and make a kill from it. I believe now you can comfortably begin your tomato farming. If you have any question on tomato farming, kindly let us know in the comment section. We are willing to help you and we are willing to help you get those 400 or even 500 crates. You get that 40 times. Yes, remember if you get high yield, and at low cost, regardless sometimes of the price, you definitely get good margins. But if you have low yields and you get low prices, you end up making losses. And in tomato farming, there is no shortcut. There is no shortcut. You cannot plant an OPV variety and you expect 40 tons. You cannot deny the crop a CN or NPK and you expect good plant. You cannot keep weekly spraying of chemicals to control Q-tabs, Oruta, white fries, bright, yellow spots, bra black spots. You cannot skip that chemical application and you expect gold yields. It doesn't happen like that. You have to be consistent. Consistent. Don't forget also to like, to subscribe, and to share. See you next in the next tutorial.